part four of Blender 2.6, the basics. In this video, we're talking all about saving, restoring, creating backups, and creating iterations of our Blender files. As with any program that you're spending a lot of time in and putting a lot of effort into creating a masterpiece like my snowman here, you're gonna to wanna to make saving a regular thing that you do, and you're gonna to wanna to create iterations of your files. You might think that saving is something that's pretty easy and obvious to do, but in Blender, because it wasn't made for Mac or for Windows, it was made for Linux, um, saving might not seem the same and as easy as you thought it might be. So we're gonna go up to the file menu and save or save as. The first time I haven't saved this yet, so we'll do a save as. This is the save dialog box. Obviously, it doesn't look familiar to you because uh, if you're on a Mac or Windows and that's what you're used to, it's looking a whole lot different than your conventional save dialog box. So on the left side of your screen is where you're going to find, probably on Windows, you'll find your drive letters over here. And these are my system bookmarks. In other words, things on my Mac that I have shortcuts to on my sidebar in a normal window. Um, so to find where you want to save, normally you're going to see probably your desktop where I'm going to save to in my system bookmarks. And yes, I have nothing on my desktop right now except for a recycle bin thing because I'm running parallels. If you're on Windows, you're going to see a drive letters up here. Now these two top bars in the save dialog box are, well, the top one is the path where you're saving to. Right now I'm saving into my user folder on the desktop. You might see, if you're on Windows, you might see like C colon slash and then users and then your name and then wherever you're saving to. But over here is where you actually see and navigate through your folders. And of course, when you see like your C drive here, you'll probably end up going into the users. This is my Windows partition. And I would go into my user folder and then I could save onto my, uh, into my documents or something like that. But I'm just gonna save onto my desktop. The second line is your file name. All Blender files end, well, the basic Blender files always end in dot blend. And so I'm gonna name this um, I'll leave the dot blend on there. I'm not sure if you have to or not. I'm going to name this snowman dot blend. But what I have always gotten into the habit of doing is putting a number at the end of my file name. So I'm going to put an underscore, which is shift and then the key next to your zero key. Um, and then a zero zero because in, in computer land we always start counting at zero. But you can start from one if you want to. And over on the right I'm going to press save as blender file. And that's great. Seems pretty easy, but there's a few more ins and outs and kinks to this whole saving thing. I'm gonna close this file, and there it is on my desktop, snowman underscore zero zero dot blend. Um, if you have Blender installed, which hopefully you do, I mean, you can get a portable version of Blender that you don't have to install. Um, you should just be able to double click on your Blender file and it'll open up, and that's great. Let's say that we would do some changes. Let's say I don't like the size of this bottom ball and I wanna make it bigger. Of course, I should go from my front orthographic view when I'm making any changes. Maybe I'll move it down a little bit. Um, maybe I'll make this top hat a little bit taller. And then I'll move it up a little bit. Great, perfect. If I now do a file and save, something funny is gonna happen wherever you saved your original file. I'm gonna quickly um, close this actually. We now have a second file on our desktop. We have the original snowman underscore zero zero dot blend. We also have the same file or a similar named file that ends in dot blend one. This is probably something that you've never experienced before because Blender automatically makes a backup of every file that you save over. So if I ever uh, encounter a situation where my original file is now corrupt, or I do something that I don't want to, I can always go back to a previous version. Let's open up uh, this file again, and let's say that I accidentally go wonky and I destroy something and I do a file save, and I close it, and I don't want that change, well, I can go back to the previous version. But look, it actually has changed or created another backup, so really two backups for every file. Now, why would they do this? Well. Again, if you're working on an actual production that you care about, you're going to want to have um, multiple backups of everything you do, and that's not a bad thing. I mean, if you're really short on storage space on your um, computer, let's say you have a small solid state drive, uh, that could be a concern. So you can actually delete these files, that's totally okay, but 
if you have room for it, I would keep them. Now, how do you use these files? Well, they end in .blend1 now, and your computer won't know how to open them. So if you just go and you edit the file name and get rid of the dot or the one at the end of the, the uh, dot blend, and then you change the file name so you don't have two of the same name, um, I'm going to call this backup. Um, and I'm going to say yes, use blend. You'll see a similar message if you're using Windows. Uh, I'll double click on that one now, and there's my good snowman. So that's the backed up file. Something else that you should be aware of is, or know how to do, is create iterations of your files. If you're working for a long time on a really complex model, and you do a file save every so often, that's great, but then you still only have like three versions of your file. You have original file and two backups. Um, something that I always recommend every Blender user doing when they're creating something that takes more than, let's say, an hour, uh, is going up to file and save as every once in a while. Say, doing file save every once in a while is good, but every once in a while you should do a file save as, and the fact that our file has a number at the end of it is for a good reason. Because every once in a while I do a file save as, and then I press this plus over here. And what it does is it iterates the, um, the file number, or the file name, the number in the file name rather, um, by one. So if I press this plus, the zero zero changed to zero one, and then I press save as blender file. If I make some changes, let's say I make his hat, I'm gonna select both of the hat pieces and make it bigger. If I do a file and save as and do a plus to version two and save as blender file, then that's gonna create a new file with a new change. If you ever end up messing up your, your blender file, and I have done it many, many times, um, where I just couldn't go back to where I wanted to, I just go back to an earlier version of my file, and it works out really well. Um, what happens if Blender crashes? And yes, you will experience it if you use Blender long enough. Um, if I close Blender, um, now I don't actually know if Blender will warn you on all operating systems. Oops, I'm going to go back to my other version. It used to be that Blender if, would let you close it uh, without saving a file. So most programs, if you do some work and you try quitting the program, they usually say, hey, are you sure you don't want to save? Well, Blender never used to do that, um, but I think it does now. If I uh, file quit Blender, well, it didn't prompt me. So it might, it might not. I think I have seen the warning before. But let's say Blender crashes and you lose work. What do you do then? Well, Blender actually has a recover last session or restore last session built into it. So if I go up to file and recover last session, it's going to try to rem remember what it was doing last time you had Blender open. And yes, in fact, you remember that little change that I made where I moved the hat up just a few moments ago. So that's great. So I believe in this video, I've covered how to save, um, the backups that Blender creates, how to iterate your file, and how to restore. That's it for this video. Until next time, I'll see you then.